Oh, Twilight, have you been hanging around Fluttershy? There's nothing unnatural about subjugating furry little animals. Here, let me sing a song for you. On annual occasion, between the tax evasion, the higher-ups will hire us to clean the snowy nation. We gather up the birdies, and even though they're dirty, we usher all the vermin back to town where they can scurry. We go into the caves where we hope the bears behave, and we prod them with the stick until they wake up mad and gaze. Of course, you can't forget the bugs where they live beneath the rugs, and you've gotta go to garden and say good morning to the grubs. Sash, this is really nothing but a pure owl hoax. Studies show that species don't respect these jokes. They can work around whatever plans we make. I think you're simply lost on what is found at stake. You mentioned you don't get any wages, but did you know that there's a committee that takes federal funds and then pays provincial taxes on the profits? I don't suppose you know about pork barrel politics. Applejack's the one who deals with pigs, but I know that every year all the birds come home. The little ones will sing their pretty songs, and then a hawk will eat their moms. And I guess that that is pretty sad. But it's cool, cause hawks are cool. Okay, I feel like we're coming from two totally separate lines of thinking. What I was getting at was not that this is cool, but rather that it's a great big bureaucratic mess that requires a ton of oversight. You shouldn't be in charge just because nobody else wanted to be. And especially not if it's so you can watch hawks eat little birds. If you look at the budgeting and past all the mudslinging, you find little reasons behind the face publishing, but setting aside the sinecure politics of insecure idiots or lugubrious lunatics, there's an optimal level of offering aid for these little creatures that calls to be weighed. Basically, you can screw up their ecosystem something fierce. Well, the birdies and the bears are made of pretty rough, tough stuff. I think they barely notice if we screwed things up. That's the core convenience of our natural, or whatever is the meaning that I meant to sell. I haven't heard the reason why we have the snows. Maybe there's a chance no pony knows. What I think is most important is that we get things done. And that we get done early, because this isn't fun. Last year I got frostbite from my head to my butt, and I cried and I cried, and they wouldn't let me off early because they thought I was faking. Really, it was because Tuba Sunbather blew off his job moving his cloud, so I took over and got all wet without the special jackets that you need. Now, I try to be nice and everything, but I got all up on his case, and he said he'd make it up to me. Like, he'd buy an ice cream cone for me for the spring, but he never did. Maybe he thought I'd forget, but I didn't, though. I got frostbite, I went to the doctor and everything. That was a really harsh lesson, I'm never gonna do that again. It wasn't like that in Cloudsdale, everyone was more aware of the weather, you know. So what I hear you saying is that the picture you're portraying is administrative messes and a schedule that oppresses you, get zero compensation, not allowed with innovation, and the working that you do is widely free of vindication. I would say that's pretty stable, and you're grasping what you're able, that the seasonal employment isn't much to my enjoyment, but I'm trapped within the system by a certain lack of wisdom, and I'd make a break if I could just be free from obligation. If that's the way things are, then I guess I'll hit the bar, and I'll leave you to your labor before I let it get too far. I thought of taking over, but I dropped my damn composure, and it isn't worth the time if there isn't much exposure. Okay, Twilight, well you have a good day, I guess. I'll just stay here and deal with all these pigeons. Great. If Applejack asks, I'm busting my ass shoveling snow. She's probably way too busy to find you. Good.